Peace and bliss. Welcome back to Reclaiming Our Roots. My name is Tanya, and I am standing here above last year's onion bed. I have made the decision that I will be using this space again for planting our onions. But that's not the purpose of this video today. Today I wanted to take the opportunity to explain to you all why do I call my containers no dig containers and i'm sure if you haven't heard or a lot of you may have heard about the no dig method and essentially what that method is is not disturbing the soil to disrupt the life organisms that inhabit it okay you want to leave that soil structure in place with minimal to very little disturbance to allow the soil to thrive so you do not dig the surface and how do I apply that to my containers I simply do just that a couple of years ago um, I'm, I'm sorry let me backtrack in 2013 when I started gardening I started on my balcony and over the years I've learned different garden practices that have helped me to effectively grow a better garden and as a result of those practices have also uh, taught me the value of our soil, okay? That is the structure of your garden. And what I've learned is by disturbing the soil, every year what I would do, I would get my trowel, I would mix my amendments in the bed or the container, and I would disturb the soil. Soil. I just give it a good mix, you know, mix everything up, and not realizing that you know there's 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 life going on here, right? There's an entire ecosystem that's going on here, right? And why disrupt their process and progress when I can just apply a layer of new soil, leaving the life forces up under there intact. That includes worms and all the microbes that that make our soul what it is in order for it to be healthy to sustain our plant life. So last year, instead of disturbing the containers and mixing everything in in the container, last year I used the wheelbarrow. So I'll mix in my compost, my azomite my worm castings, and what else do I generally add? Um, plant food, I'll add the nitrogen, the blood meal, the phosphorus, everything the plant needs to grow and thrive. I mix that in a wheelbarrow and I'll apply it to the top of the container. So essentially what I'm doing, I'm just top dressing is what I'm doing. And you see like with this container here, and I'll take you around to the other containers. I will leave this plant material in place, not plant material, but I'll leave the wood chip material in place because that provides carbon. I'll leave it in place. And these are shredded wood chips and it takes anywhere from a good year, good one to two years for them to break down. So I allow that organic matter to break down in place, not disturbing it, because remember the goal is, is not to disturb the soil and the microbes that inhabit the soil. Leave everything intact. And then I'll just add a top dressing. And there's gonna be minimal disturbance because I have to plant a plant. But not to the degree where I'm digging and disrupting the entire, excuse me, the entire ecosystem. And um, no dig goes a little bit further. Um, say if I were planting in the ground. And instead of disrupting the soil, you put like a weed fabric on top to suppress and kill the grass. And then you plant on top of that, okay, in compost and things of that nature. And you form these organic beds that eventually assimilate back into the ground. Um, I'm not an expert on it. I've just really started to get into the no dig method probably about a good year or so. And I've learned a lot. If you're looking for a guru, Charles Downing, he is one of the uh, gurus as it, as it relates to No Dig. I highly recommend you check out his channel. 
I have learned a lot and still learning a lot on how I can better become a better gardener. And as a result, becoming a better gardener, I can push my garden to produce higher yields and learn how to do it with minimal disturbance to the soil so that we can um, benefit all around. So I just want to share that with you all. So when you hear me in future videos referencing my containers as no dig containers, that's exactly what that is. Um, I have an upcoming video that I'm gonna share with you all. Let me take you all around. So I was out doing some work. This is my lemon balm, as you can see. My lemon balm is coming back. She is a bully, so she is contained by herself. If you plant lemon balm with your other plants, she will take over. So she's a perennial, and she comes back every year. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. And you see these leaves here? I'm gonna leave them in place. I'm gonna allow them to break down in place and add value to the soil, okay? So what I'll do as the leaves, as she starts to grow, I'll add some compost in there and some plant and some plant fertilizer. And that's it. I'm gonna take you all around front so you all can see the containers. And give you all a good example of what I'm talking about. Okay, let me start over here. As you can see these containers here, this is where I planted my comfrey cuttings the other day. All I did was top the container and I mixed in the wheelbarrow, plant food, and then I just spread it on top. So it looked like this. I left the wood chips and all in place because this provides carbon. Old plant material, now this is a weed. I pull out all the weeds. But if there were, say, plant material in here from the prior growing year, I would just cut it at the base and I'll allow it to compost in place. Okay, adding nitrogen. So minimal disturbance is the name of the game. Okay, minimal disturbance. And what I'm also going to start doing, because I am limited on space, and I do not have the space that would allow me to do high levels of composting, I'm going to use my containers as composting bins. So what does that look like? That looks like me allowing, um, say, in between garden seasons, I'll put out my eggshells because I keep eggshells in the house and when I do I blend them into a powder form. I'll spread those in there. I have banana peels that we collect, right? I have a worm I have a worm bin that's on the balcony up there. I'll share that with you all later. I feed those to my worms but what I'm also going to do is start to put some of those, let them dry out, blend them that adds potassium to the soil and sprinkle them and as a top dressing in my containers. So we will be composting literally in place in these compost bins until we have um, land to be able to start composting on a much larger scale. But I just wanted to pop in and share that with you all so that you all have a reference as to what I'm referring to when I refer to my containers as no dig containers. Like this here, these wood chips, these wood chips have been in here since last year. Okay, they'll break down. Okay, they'll break down and get become compost and carbon for the container. And the only disturbance you'll see me do is when I dig a hole. Sorry about that guys, is when I dig a hole minimal disturbance and I'll just dig a hole in the center and transport and transplant my transplant I'm not disturbing this area here at all just right in the center and there'll be new compost I'll bring you all along that will be the next video I share with you all of what it looks like when I top my containers what I add to my mix and so on and so forth so yep yeah. Just want to share that with you all to show you what 
no dig looks like in our garden. Okay, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. If you have, I would love to know, how do you all uh, compost? Do you all have compost bins? Do you live by, or have you tried the no dig method? And what does it look like for you? I'd like to know, okay? All right, until the next video, peace and blessings.